Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I am on Pursuit's S248. This is a new center console from Pursuit, and the mission of this boat has to be the entry level for the brand that's gonna develop brand loyalty, because there's an awful lot to like about this. First question that I ask is, what's gonna separate this boat from every other center console on the market? And the answer is, a lot. Let's get started as I do a full features inspection and performance evaluation. Let's start right here in the cockpit area of the center console. Now this always is the area that will make or break the boat because if you can't fish, if you can't function in this area, it's not gonna work. This is quite functional for several reasons. They've added a little bit of length to the original design of this boat. So it's got good length, 35 inches by 76 inches between the two bolsters, padded bolsters going all the way around. So there's easy area to lean up against when you're fighting a fish. Notice no rod holders behind the seats. That's where I always will either hit the rod holders or hit the rods and the reels as I'm walking around. This area, nice and clear, the rods moved up to rocket style launchers on the trailing edge of the hardtop. There's a drawer for tackle storage. And underneath that, there's a cooler. It just pulls out and then it rolls out. And this is on rollers. Slide this back in and now, We've got a transom seat. And notice the seat back comes up a bit, so it's much more comfortable. I've got an elevated seat back, pretty much double wide at 33 inches. Just behind, more rod holders. There's also a tow bar and then a 24 gallon live well in the transom. There are 11 gallon fish boxes and I noticed that those are measured to the top of the fish box, not all the way up to the lip where you can squeeze a little bit more out that nobody ever does. These are actually 11 gallons. They're both diaphragm pumped, single diaphragm that goes to a diverter in the center. Lifting a hatch in the center of the deck exposes, well, let's say a bit of a mechanical room. There's fuel filter. Here's your diaphragm pump for the two fish boxes and the diverters for the two. Live well pump, engine start battery, house battery. Looking a little closer, I see that all of the hoses are double clamped and notice that they're all safetyed, so we're not going to be catching ourselves on sharp edges. The battery cables, they're all labeled properly. Notice how all the wiring is supported nicely. The fuel tank is just ahead, and take a look at this. Crimp connection on there, you don't usually see that. Now as I go to put this deck hatch back, here's another thoughtful touch. Simple little thing that makes a difference. Additionally, in the cockpit space, fresh water and raw water wash down. There's undergunnel rod storage. There's also dedicated storage for carbon fiber poles that will go into receivers at both the stern and the bow so we can put up an awning on both sides, make this boat under the shade all the way through its whole length. The receivers for the rods that go in the undergunnel rod storage, the top of them will hold a seven and a half foot rod, the bottom nine and a half. Notice there's dedicated storage for a fire extinguisher and there's a courtesy light at deck level. I like that there are rod holders in the 10 inch cap rails along with beverage holders and notice that the beverage holders are big enough to support a large drink. Just ahead there's a fuel fill. That's only on the port side. I'd like to see an additional one on the starboard side. We make our way to the swim platform through a door over to the starboard side and it leaves an opening 18 inches. Now what happens a lot with a center console is you may ship water overboard and that's okay. It happens. Best way to get rid of that water, move the boat forward, let it get to the deck drains and back. Pursuit took it to one other level and I really like this. On this solid door right at the bottom, there's an outward opening door so we can ship more water out of the boat. That is a thoughtful touch. The door is also held open by a magnetic catch. Now, it's hard to not be impressed with the job that Pursuit did in the stern of this boat and there are several reasons why. They measured the swing of the engine so that they could get the maximum width out of these swim platforms, 30 inches. That's largely unprecedented. Each one comes out from the transom, 45 inches. Just ahead of the engine, there's a hatch that gives you a little access underneath and it doesn't need to be in the up position for the engine to tilt fully out of the water. So no worries about damaging that if we tilt the engine. And to the port side, there's stern anchor storage and notice it's self-draining. 
Eight inch pull up cleats located around the boat, three to each side. For power, it's the Yamaha F300 with the electric steering. Even though we've got a big leaning post, there's still 16 inches to both sides of walk space as we make our way forward. To both sides, bulwark storage compartment. That's something we just don't typically see in a boat in this class. And even in this area, 19 inches of walk space. And that brings us to the bow. Much more roomy and frankly, more comfortable than I was expecting to see, especially for a boat in this entry level class. Four foot seats to both sides. They're separated by a minimum of 15 inches up at the bow. Notice that there are adjustable seat backs. They lock into position. And when they're locked into the side position, they serve as nice little bumpers for when the boat is rolling back and forth. I like how the rails are mounted just inside the cap rail, so it's much more comfortable than having them up on top and in the way. There's storage underneath the padded bolster. Nice feature because it's a great place to put your rolled up towel, your cell phone, things along those lines. And there are also courtesy lights there. There's an optional table that can go in this position. We can also lower the table, add a filler cushion, make the whole thing into a casting platform or add the cushions and we can make it into a sunbed. The huge amount of storage on this boat continues here in the bow where we've got it under the two side seats and in the deck. And just look at how deep it goes in that deck compartment. Additionally, these side ones, they're insulated and self-draining. Pursuit did not include a forward aft facing seat. By eliminating that seat now, we can get right up to the foredeck and work it at waist high because it's 30 inches high. That gives us this whole flush foredeck. Everything is under this hatch. Now, did they go with a windlass or a reboarding ladder? Actually, they went with both. By moving the boarding ladder to the side, now we can beach this boat, still have easy access to get on and off, and there's a Lumar windlass right in the center. To the side, we have access to the anchor road, which is chain and rope. There's a remote control right alongside. Now notice the seat just ahead of the console goes all the way to the outside of the console, giving us a full 39 inches. So that means that even with these armrests, which we don't typically see in a boat in this class, with these armrests down, we still have a two person seat. This one opens from the front to access the compartment inside. Most will have a door to the side that gives you limited access. This gives you much more of a wider access point going down into the head compartment. Standard will be a porta potty. So if you want to use this for storage and not as a head, you simply take the porta potty out and now you've got a huge storage compartment. If you do want it as a dedicated head, you might want to opt up from the porta potty to this electric flush toilet. There's also the electrical panel with the battery switch and there are storage areas just alongside that. That's something we don't usually see because everyone wants to try to get access behind the console. What they did instead was they made this console able to be tilted so that you have easy access behind. Your installer is going to love this. And notice as we saw in the engine, we have the electric steering. We can see that again right here. It's important to note that while Garmin does the electronics installation, all of this wiring is done in-house by Pursuit. Now that brings us to the helm area. Two 12 inch Garmin displays. Notice the electrical switches are low instead of across a panel to the top. If they did that, it would lower the panels and now they're kind of blocked by the steering wheel. Here, the panels are up high, the switches are low. But even with that said, notice that the switches that you're gonna use more often, the horn, the lights, things like that are up high. The lesser used switches are down below. So there's some thoughtful touches going on right there. In the center, your Yamaha engine display, the JL Audio stereo over to the right, digital engine control, trim tabs, start stop, kill switch, beverage holders are to both sides. Up above, tempered glass on three sides, windshield wiper and there's a washer as well. Notice the compass is mounted in line with the helm rather than being in the center of the console. There's a small storage area just alongside for dropping your cell phone and I'm happy to see that it's padded. Might also be an interesting touch to add an inductive charger right there. Now, this is the upgraded helm seat, full 46 inches wide. Notice that the bolsters adjust up and down instead of flipping entirely up. So now when it's in the up position, we've got a much more comfortable leaning action going on with it. But two individual bolsters is key. Most seats in this class will have flip armrests to the outsides. This upgraded one has flip armrests to the inside as well. 
the seats also adjust fore and aft. I'd like to see a different adjustment mechanism than this one that sticks out right there. Notice that all of the rails are powder coated white. The supports also have integrated grab rails. There's a storage box up on top. Notice we've got two speakers, plus there are two at the forward end of the hard top. There's two more in the bow. There's two more in the cockpit, plus two subwoofers. A lot going on with the stereo upgrade in this boat. The Pursuit S248 has a length overall of 25 feet 8 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a draft of 3 feet. With an empty weight of 6,050 pounds, half fuel, and two people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 6,830 pounds. With the single Yamaha F300 V6 turning a 15.5 by 17 Saltwater Series 2 prop and run up to 5,800 RPM, our speed topped out at 46 miles per hour. Best cruise was reached at 4,000 RPM and 30.1 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 11.7 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.6 miles per gallon and a range of 279 statute miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 120 gallon total fuel capacity. In acceleration tests, we reached planing speed in 4 seconds, 20 miles per hour in 7.6, and 30 miles per hour in 11.1. This was a fun boat to drive for several reasons. First of all, she's got a nice slide that holds the turn, but it eases it across the turn so you really don't get thrown over to the side. You don't have to brace yourself like you're going to get thrown overboard. It's a very comfortable feeling. There's also enough bank into that turn so that you're more planted down into the deck. It's quite comfortable. The power steering is excellent. Um, the electric steering from Yamaha. So very easy boat to drive and she's very responsive to the helm. Uh, I did notice that I had to drop the trim all the way down when I got into the turns so that we didn't ventilate. If I leave it up into its running position, put it into a hard turn, a little bit of ventilation, but not a big deal. As far as trim goes, maybe almost halfway to get her into her running attitude where she feels best and runs best and picks up the best amount of speed. Any more than that, she'll start cavitating a little bit. You get ventilation into the prop, but uh, you won't find the bow coming up. You won't find the spray moving back as you bring the trim up. You just find her running better as you bring the trim up. Another interesting facet that I found, there's a little bit of wind today, maybe 10, 15 tops, and it's coming out of the east. So when I'm making a run down to the south, she tends to lean a little bit, just a little bit into the wind. I can correct that with the trim tabs and level it out. Coming the other way, the torque effect of the propeller seems to cancel that out, so she rides level. A lot of things impress me about this boat, mostly the fact that there are so many features put into a boat in this size and the fact that the engineering department at Pursuit managed to get it all into this footprint without making it seem cramped and hard to get around. That's a huge detail. But as far as making an entry-level boat to try and build brand loyalty, I think Pursuit hit it out of the park with the S248. And that's my full features inspection and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.